What's up YouTube? This is James coming back at you with another informative video. Uh, this story comes out of Brooklyn. It was an axe attack suspect. You know, actually hacked up uh, two women as a matter of fact. Um, this is a very gruesome uh, story right here that's just full of madness. Uh, let's check this video out and then I'll get into my commentary. Hi there, Kaidi. Yes, the NYPD is publicly thanking PIX11 for helping them arrest this alleged murderer. And all our thanks go to one of our staff members, Ava Pittman, who had a 15-minute call with the suspect and talked him into making the phone call to the 9-0 precinct. I didn't approach the conversation as if I was talking to a murderer. I approached the conversation as if I just wanted to know what happened inside of that apartment, apartment AJ. PIX11 digital producer Ava Pittman was working the story of one of the most gruesome, horrific murders in a long time. 20-year-old Savannah Rivera was partially decapitated, hacked to death with an ax early Saturday morning in the Bushwick houses when Ava learned the name of the survivor female victim, the PIX11 producer and assignment editor searched her Facebook page for information about her boyfriend. Pittman found someone called the Grim Creeper and messaged him to call her in the PIX11 newsroom, which he did. He was crying on the phone. You can hear the sniveling. He told me that he suffered from schizophrenia, that he was by polar and that he suffered from severe paranoia while Pittman said the suspect now identified by police as Jerry Brown said he did not remember much about the attack he did tell Pittman that he had staples in his head and was off his medication he asked me what do you think I should do I said you need to call police you need to go down to the precinct he said which one I said, you need to go to the 9-0 precinct. Do you know where that is? He said, yes. Within half an hour of that phone call at 3.45 in the afternoon, police confirmed that Jerry Brown was in custody and is now being charged with second-degree murder, attempted murder, and criminal possession of a weapon. What happened in that apartment was brutal. It was gr gruesome. And... Um, our condolences go to the family of Savannah Rivera, of, to, of the other victim as well. well. And I hope that they do get justice. And, and I also hope that Jerry gets the help that, that he so desperately needs. The suspect is currently being treated at an area hospital at and his ex-girlfriend is in critical but stable condition at Elmhurst Hospital. We are live in front of the 90 Precinct Station House in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. McGee Hickey, PIX11. And news, back to you, Kaidi. Yes, and we are all. Yeah, uh, that was very, very gruesome right there. You know, I don't know what, I bet, well, I'm going to just say this. That a combination of uh, the, the prescription drugs that this dude was on and probably with some illegal drugs, you know what I mean? Uh, throw in some de demonic spirits, you know, uh, and this is what you get. A situation like this, you know, it's a damn shame. You know, uh, this dude actually took a, a, a axe, you know, a hatchet like, you know, to a couple women. And everything it's messed up you know all i can say you know to my listeners is uh y'all be careful who y'all see who y'all date you know because just watch for you know uh, erratic behaviors and you know subtle like type you know movements and all that old kind of stuff you know because these people out here now you just can't be too sure you know what i mean and everything let's get into the story well, as the video said, PIX11 producer plays role in surrender of Brooklyn X attack suspect. See, and uh, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, uh, 
the New York, what's that? New York Police Department is thanking Pix11 for helping in the arrest of the suspected killer in a brutal axe attack that left one woman dead and another critically injured. I don't talk to him as I was talking to a murderer. Ava Pittman, a Pix11 digital producer and a well assignment editor, said Sunday. I just wanted to know what went on inside the apartment, Pittman added. Uh, Pittman was working the story of one of the most gruesome and horrific New York murders in a long time on Saturday. Savannah Rivera, 20, was partially decapitated and hacked to death with an axe early Saturday morning in the Bushwick homes of Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Uh, well, you know... That uh, producer here, you know, it's amazing how she got, you know, involved in that. Because, you know, you wouldn't find a lot of people that would want to get that involved with a, a person that's uh, allegedly they murdered someone. You know what I mean? Just to try to get the truth, you know. And as a matter of fact, when you think about it, she's putting herself at risk. You know, I'll just let the cops do that, you know. But back to the story. When Pittman learned the name of the surviving female victim, the Pix11 producers searched the woman's Facebook page for information about a possible boyfriend. Pittman found someone calling themselves Grim Creeper, Creeper, and messaged him to call her in the Pix11 newsroom. And he did. Now, Grim means like death like. Creeper, sneaky, and all that kind of stuff. That tells you right there, you know, the personality of this 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 dude. You know, uh, grim creeper. You know, like that's too that like really represents the grim reaper, which is death itself. You know, and everything. Uh, this dude is cr probably crawling with demonics. You know, demonic spirits. As far as I'm concerned, you know. Uh, mm mm mm. Let me see. He was crying and you could hear him sniveling. Pittman recall. He told me he was schizophrenic, bipolar and paranoid. She added those right there are all the main culprits of demonic possession. I'll tell you that right now. Pittman said the suspect now identified by police as 34 year old Jerry Brown told her he did not remember much about the attack. Another call print of demonic possession because his his body was used as a host to carry out all that evil. So whatever, you know, it took over him, it pr pretty much used his body to do all the work. So he probably won't remember, you know. He told Pittman that he was injured and had staples in his head and was off his medication. Another thing, uh, people, I want to let you know, uh, anytime, like if you take prescription drugs and stuff like that for uh, psychotic means, you know what I mean? Something to control the way you think, you know, and stuff like that. It is possible it can, like any kind of drugs can, can open up the threshold, you know what I mean, of your inner being to be acceptable for other entities to come in and control you. That's basically the way it's working now. He asked me, what do you think I should do? I said, you need to call the police. You need to go down to the precinct, Pittman said. After the 15 minute phone call, the man who identified himself as Jerry called Pittman back asking for the number of the 90th precinct of the 90th police precinct within a half an hour of that second phone call at 3 45 p.m saturday police confirmed that jerry brown was in custody and later saturday night said he was charged with second degree murder attempted murder and criminal possession of a weapon so he's a criminal possession of a weapon that means he's got a record that's all that is what happened in that apartment was brutal, was gruesome, Pittman said. Our condolences go 
uh, to the family of Savannah Riviera, well, Rivera, and the other victim as well. I hope that they do get justice. And I also hope that Jerry gets the help he so desperately needs, Pittman said. Brown is currently under arrest, but also being treated at, a, at an era hospital. His ex-girlfriend is being treated at Elmer's Hospital Center in Queens. Okay, here's another video. Let me see what else. And that'd be it. Let's see what this is saying. Man, this is crazy. Hi, Katie. So while that phone call was taking place between the suspect and one of our pick select producers, it was a frantic and worrisome afternoon here here in Brooklyn while police were searching for that person. They now have this person in custody. As you said, they are confident that they're not looking for anyone else in this case. At this Williamsburg, Brooklyn apartment, the frustration bordering on rage was palpable among relatives of 20-year-old Savannah Rivera. She was hacked to death with an axe early Saturday morning during an attack in her friend's apartment not far away in the Bushwick houses. What do you know about this guy? Nobody knows about this guy. We keep on telling you the same thing. Nobody knows about this guy. She hangs out with this girl. Nobody, no, nobody knows nothing. Nobody knows nothing. Police say the apartment belonged to this woman. We are concealing her identity because detectives say she too was attacked by the same axe-wielding man during what started out as a, a possible domestic dispute. Specifically, the suspect may be her boyfriend and, and father of her child. To be clear, the surviving victim barely made it out alive and suffered gash wounds from the axe attack to her body and head. An Uber driver called 911 on her behalf and took her to the hospital. As I mentioned, we do not believe this horrific incident was random. We believe all involved are known to each other. As far as motive, that is something investigators are piecing together right now. Pix11 News, Ava Pittman actually made contact with the suspect, who calls himself Jerry and Grim Creepa on Facebook. Law enforcement sources confirm this same man is the person currently in custody being treated as a person of interest in this case. Over the phone, Jerry said that he is a schizophrenic and doesn't remember the attack. This was a Listen to this. Police say that the surviving victim's four-year-old daughter was actually inside the apartment during the attack, asleep in a back room. Police found her. She's safe with family. We're live in Brooklyn tonight. Jay Dow, Pix11 News. Jay, thank you. Yeah, that, that that's just terrible. It's too bad, you know. Uh, I got a good feeling, though. They're going to try to, you know, make this a race thing. You know what I mean? Even though that crazy bastard, you know, just went and murders. And anybody could have did this shit. But just because he was black and they was, you know, Puerto Rican, that's going to be one more thing they're going to be trying to talk, you know, about black people about. You know what I'm saying? I hate the whole entire situation, though. But like I said, these people these days are doing all kinds of things. Men and women alike of all colors. You understand what I'm saying? So, like I said earlier on in the commentary, y'all make sure, you know what I'm saying, y'all be careful who y'all see. You know, I mean, just just, just watch them, you know what I'm talking about, or whatever, because there's some things, you know, that's happening around us, among us, you know, through our day-to-day -day lives, you know what I'm saying, and they getting in these, you know, when I say things, I'm talking about these damn demons. You see what I mean? They are getting in to these people that uh, basically has like reprobate tendencies anyway, you know what I'm saying? And, and their conscience is just like 
basically watered down has been pushed back to the walls of their existence in their heads i'm telling you this is what's going on but y'all tell me what y'all think about this situation uh like comment share and subscribe and this is james and i'm out peace